Boronu State Governor attacked. If the governor is not safe, what is the fate of citizens? And does the judiciary impose governors on us? This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladendi. Welcome back, it's the Plus Politics. Boko Haram terrorists was reported to have attacked the Borono State Governor Babagana Zulum, who actually his convoy was attacked on the Baga Highway. This was on the same road the five aid workers who were killed about a week ago were abducted earlier in the year. Although the attack was repelled by security operatives in the governor's convoy, there were casualties on the side of his entourage. A furious governor, Zulum, thereafter confronted the commanding officer, expressing his disappointment at the inability of the military to read Baga and surrounding areas of his agents. The Northern Governors Forum has condemned the attack, describing the act as callous. Joining us to discuss this is, I call him the renowned Dr. Ona Ehomu, who is a security expert. Good evening, Dr. Ona. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Good to have you. Uh, same to you. I hope uh, I was going to ask you for meat, but I remember that you didn't remember to, <laughs> to, to, to go out to buy the ram. <laughs> okay, we also have on the standby a very, very popular face too, a legal practitioner. I almost called him doctor because I'm going to have some doctors. Mr. Dele Farutimi. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you for having me. And good to have you. Good evening, Doc. <laughs> good evening, sir. Baba. <laughs> okay, let's get the conversation started. Let me start with you, Dr. Erna. Probably a lot of people were shocked that such a thing is still happening because over time we've heard that uh, these people have been, uh, 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 you know, we, we've, we've conquered them. We've taken them out. Now, this is the governor, this chief security officer of the state, being attacked. And before we go into the altercation between him and the commanding officer, what's your immediate reaction to that? Well, thank you very much for having us. Uh, um, I think it's uh, quite unfortunate that the state chief executive will come under attack. That just gives us um, an indication of what is going on there and also gives us uh, an indication of the capabilities of uh, the uh, Boko Haram terrorists in that uh, region. Now, um, uh, what, what we have seen governors, we've seen executives come under attack uh, several times before in that region. Um, Mr. Shatima himself, the former governor, now Senator Shatima, was attacked. Uh, Mr. Zulum has been attacked in the past. The chief of army staff himself has been attacked. His convoy has been attacked. Um, the, um, the former governor of uh, uh, Adamawa State has also been attacked. But a lot of these are in the past. But more recently, after the claims of decimation and destruction of uh, the Boko Haram threat in the Northeast, um, we, we know we've seen uh, highway attacks. We've seen a lot of uh, ambushes against hardened military convoys. So I, I don't know why anybody would be surprised that uh, the governor of uh, uh, Borno State was attacked because uh, this is what the bad guys do. This is what Boko Haram does. They, they just attack and kill people. I think it's very fortunate. We should be thanking God that um, uh, the governor wasn't hurt uh, because this is one young man who is working very hard for his state. Uh, we, we must be thanking God that he wasn't hurt and uh, that we didn't have a lot of casualties or uh, perhaps... Uh, not excessive casualties uh, in this particular roadway incident. Um, now, let me just give you, um, uh, before the pacification of Boko Haram, as it were, or the assumed pacification of Boko Haram, uh, the emir uh, of, um, uh, what is this place now? Anyway, an emir was attacked and killed uh, on, on that um, uh, road view uh, on the road of uh, that is in Borno State Be by Boko Haram uh, attacks. So um, you know these are well documented in my new book on Boko Haram. Anyhow, so I, I'm just saying uh, we are happy that he wasn't killed, 
and I joined the Northern Governors in congratulating uh, 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 Professor Babagana uh, Umara Zulum, Zulum. on uh, okay. coming out alive from that encounter. Okay, let me quickly get uh, Mr. Daly Farotimi's Far thought. Uh, he's a security expert and he's also had some, some kind of terrible experience in the hands of uh, these dear devils. But how do you describe such audacity that you have a very thick convoy like that and they were attacked? What's your take on that? Well, thankfully, I'm not on your show because of my security expertise. <laughs> I'm just um, a retired lawyer, but a citizen of Nigeria, nonetheless. And what I'll say is this. What happened to Professor Babagana Zulu is merely emblematic of what is happening to Nigerian citizens across the length and breadth of Nigeria on a day-to-day -day basis. When it happens to the rich and powerful, men such as the governor of the state, who is the totemic chief security officer, then it becomes news because of the fact that Boko Haram would obviously have sought out such a price target in order to drive home their capacity. But the key thing that we must not forget in the midst of all of this is the fact that what we are seeing is a state at war with itself. The first duty of every state is the provision of security for lives and properties. When you now have a situation where the state proves itself incapable of protecting the person who is meant to be the chief security officer of that state, even if he does not control the security forces there, he is the first person that they are charged with protecting. And yet, this is happening to him. So it's merely a wake-up call, if anything, if we haven't been slapped awake by the several things that have been happening in our territories, at least we should be able to slap ourselves awake when something like this begins to happen to chief executives within states. Um, Nigeria has lost control of its territory. Mr. President can sit down and continue to deny the evidence of his own eyes, and we can all continue to sugarcoat the bitter pill which is the fact that Nigeria requires serious security overhaul because we are in the grip of what is evidently an insurgency, a well-funded one too, in the face of the manifest failure of the Nigerian security forces. That's my own view of this. Oh, that's a very... Uh, let me stay with you before I go back to the security expert. Uh, and looking at uh, the issue, uh, our worry is typically the people and some have even accused the people of actually harboring these criminals among them. We've listened to some security experts saying that uh, probably they've not been giving them information. And you saw that commanding officer still saying that we have cleared them. They do not exist here. Does this also bring out that fact that the military as a whole is living in self-denial? See, it's not, if it were to be the Nigerian military alone that is living in self-denial, it would be easy to isolate the issue and then deal with it as a drug. But unfortunately, that is not the case. The entirety of the Nigerian states, including the citizens, we ourselves, we are living in denial of what should be obvious to us. We, number one, I'm Robert, not the spirit. I remember that jingle from my childhood. The Boko Haram operative is a member of the Nigerian state. We're not talking about the nomadic Fulani terrorist now. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about persons who are indigenous to the terrain from where the insurgency itself has its roots. So the first question we ought to be asking ourselves is this. What is feeding that insurgency? At the root of the insurgency you see is poverty. It has taken the Nigerian state, weaponizing poverty against its people, 
to bring them to the level of desperation that must be feeding the recruitment drive of the Boko Haram terrorists. Because at the end of the day, these people are drawn from within those communities. If they had not been alienated from the mainstream of the Nigerian state by the inability of the state to provide enabling capacities for them, if it hasn't been that Boko Haram is the biggest employer of labor, and in some cases, the biggest provider of welfare in those areas, mm. they wouldn't have gained the kind of localized support that they have, and they would not have become the scorch that they have become today. It took the Nigerian state, more coddling them, to turn them into what they are. They just released 601 of these same fiends a week ago. And there is nowhere in the world where it, the radicalization program has proven so successful that so many terrorists have been released back into the local populace in the same numbers that Nigeria is releasing them. 601. Those are 601 too many. Okay. And you will see them better cared for, better protected, better treated than the IDPs. Hmm. So we need to be asking ourselves some very serious questions. Okay. Are we even serious about fighting them? Mr. Faro, to me, we'll, 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 let's see whether yes, Mr. Ehomu can help us with some of the questions of race. Uh, Mr. Ehomu, a, a serious question has come up again, and the House of Reps, the minority, have come up that this is another indication that the service chief should quit. What's your take? Oh. We lost that contact with Dr. Ona. We will be back. But let me stay with you, Mr. Dele Farochimi. I, 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 I was just going to continue that conversation from the angle of some have said that uh, the problem is not even the service chiefs, but probably the commander in chief. What's your own opinion? Yeah. We can leave the substance and keep treating symptoms as we've always done in Nigeria. The service chiefs are Nigerians. They are going to work within Nigerian manufactured constraints. I believe they've been there like five years now. That's true. There has been no improvement in the theater of war. They have changed several, I believe they've changed commanders. And the only thing that you could say has happened effectively in the theater of war, at least for those of us who sit in the comfort of our home and listen to uh, TV and read our papers, what we do know is that we are more or less having super camps, more or less as if the Nigerian state has decided that it's going to pitch tents in certain parts of a vast territory. So you've ceded vast space to the terrorists, and then you provide safe zones. So that in itself is a concession already of the failure of the security approach. Because in five years, the problem has persisted. It has not abated in any way. I would imagine that the Nigerian army and other forces are well stocked with men who have fresh ideas. If somebody has run something for five years, I have no dog in this fight. One general is the same as the next general, as far as I'm concerned. They are all Nigerians. Hmm. If some people have run it for five years and the situation has deteriorated to the point to which you have soldiers whose morale have been affected to the point where they are resigning, soldiers are resigning. It's not even about a soldier turning tail. It's about a soldier saying, you know what? I am not sure. But I believe I am not equipped to do the work that I signed on to do. So I am leaving. You now have soldiers leaving. That shows you the depth to which morale has sunk in the Nigerian army. In any other society, nobody should need to tell these gentlemen that it's time to take a bow and go back home allow some other persons to give it a shot. But definitely something has to be done. Somebody should take responsibility. Anyone expecting Mr. 
Buhari, or shall I say General Buhari, to take responsibility, is probably just going to end up waiting for Godot. He's either unaware or he will be shocked. And okay. beyond being unaware and shocked, Mr. President is not going to do much more than that. Mr. Farrow, so in all honesty, I think so. Mr. Yes, Farrow, to me, let's, let's table some of the issues they've responded to, part of the things you've mentioned. And part of it, probably, if, if, if uh, oh, good. We have Dr. Ona. We will come back to that question. So, Dr. Ona, quite a lot of issues on your table. Uh, thank God you're back. Now, some said the problem is the service chief. Some say it is the commander-in-chief. Where is the problem? Or you believe all is well? Well, certainly the evidence uh, is not... Uh, in the direction that all is well. Uh, certainly there is uh, a lot of uh, performance problems here and um, uh, keeping citizens safe is the first job of government. Uh, I think that's enshrined uh, in the constitution. Uh, thank God uh, Mr. Dele is, uh, Barista Dele is here with us and he can give us the S2B or whatever it is they call that section. <laughs> but anyhow, the point here is um, there is uh, underperformance. There is poor performance in terms of uh, the war against insurgency. And I think also something that I'm worried about is that um, uh, we, we don't understand that the longer this conflict goes, the stronger the people become. Uh, it's like uh, Barista uh, Daly said just now. He said that it's becoming better funded and, uh, you know, is becoming better organized. So, uh, you know, we, we used to have a ragtag army back in 2009. Boko Haram was a ragtag army, but now Boko Haram is, uh, is a serious operation, if I may. Now, it's a very um, coincidental, if I may say, that today is the 11th anniversary of the killing of uh, Muhammad Yusuf, the uh, leader of Boko Haram at uh, police uh, state headquarters uh, in Borno State, uh, in Meduguri, and which is how we got into all this mess that we are in now, where we are looking at between 50,000 and 100,000 Naira and Nigerians dead from this same uh, conflict. Uh, and uh, it, it appears to be war without end, as it were. So I think um, we, we have performance issues here. Um, I'm not able to place uh, it, I'm not able to say whose desk it is on, whether it's on the desk of the service chiefs or on the desk of the commander in chief. Uh, but one thing that, that's clear to me is that Nigerians are underserved. Uh, and then Nigerians are being served, um, uh, you know, a lot of um, perhaps misinterpretations of facts on ground. Take, for example, what happened with uh, Governor Zulum. He was attacked um, in the uh, Baga area. Now, uh, the military guy is saying, you were not attacked, or you don't know who attacked you. I mean, who attacked him? Uh, he was attacked by Boko Haram, and uh, his security um, detail fought back and fought his way through. When they got to the military commander, he said, ah, uh, OK, we'll go and investigate who attacked you. And so the governor is asking, why is Baga not secure? Why isn't this city secure? Why is it that people cannot go back to their homes, to their... Baga is a fishing community. It's in Kukawa local government of uh, Borono State. Why isn't this place uh, secure? Why can't we go back? Why can't this people go back instead of being in IDP camps, which is what uh, was worrying the governor, because uh, the IDP uh, economy is draining a lot from state resources. And so he's like, if these people go back and start farming, uh, things will be a little bit better than uh, it is right now. So I think um, we have to kind of understand uh, all those sides of the story. But in terms of uh, who is shortchanging us, whether it's the commander in chief or whether it's the chief uh, service chiefs, well, I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to Nigerians because uh, what I keep saying when I'm asked, should the service chief be fired? I say, listen, somebody hired them. And in fact, the person who hired them within the last month came out and said, you guys are underperforming and then you ought to up your game. Well, I, I, if perhaps that is a final warning, that is a last card for them. So if they don't perform better, then maybe they might be 
dispensed with. But I think uh, the president is really, uh, the president needs to reevaluate um, his decision on uh, how the war on insurgency is going to be won in this country Let because we really do need to bring it into a close. Good. Uh, I was going to ask for that because uh, I quickly want your final comment for one minute. How, where do we go from here? Because the, the implication of this is that ordinary citizens feel more scared. The people in Burundi feel more scared. If the daredevils could come and face that huge convoy, then what must have been happening? Probably is even underreported. We know how five head workers were beheaded in front of cameras. What do we need to do urgently? I can remember how this administration started. When the headquarters was moved straight to Meduguri, can we have a reenactment? Let me start with Dr. Ona well, for your final move, comment. Moving the headquarters to Meduguri is just optics. That doesn't hmm. make it a, a better operation. Uh, I think the headquarters was moved recently also to the northwest, moved back to Medjugorje. Sometimes it was moved to Benue. We can't be moving uh, command and control around the place. You know that that doesn't. Uh, you know it's not uh, a very brilliant concept. We need to position our command and control somewhere, like in Abuja, where it is. But we need more effective operation. It's not about where the service chiefs are. But you said I should say where we go. I have said and I've said again many times. Uh, in fact, that's what Governor Umaru uh, uh, Baba Ganazulum just said. He said he threatened, in fact, he said he's going to hire vigilantes and hunters to fight this war. That is where it needs to go. Because we don't have enough men in the Nigerian army or in all the Nigerian military to garrison uh, no state. So let's forget about it. We need help. Uh, we need to create new uh, depots and then hire more people into this uh, military. But for now, for a short, uh, quick wing uh, measure, we need to get uh, the hunters, vigilance forces in there, Integrated. in the fight, in the trenches, so that we can bring this conflict to a close. Thank you so much. Now, let me quickly get your final comment, uh, Mr. Dili Farutimi. I know you're still going to stay with us for the second segment, but let me get your final I, thoughts on this. Yeah. You know, I have already confessed my ignorance of security matters. <laughs> However, doctor just pointed something out that interests me because it goes to the root of my own position as relates to all of this. And that is when he pointed out that employing those vigilantes and local hunters would be, a, would be a measure towards finding a solution to this issue. It comes back to the same restructuring issue thrown up by the request of the Southwestern governors for their Moteco forces. Because without removing the chokehold of this unequal and wicked federalism that we purport to, to practice, you really cannot enable the local communities to do what they are capable of doing by far better than the federal government. That's a so very... for me, it's a restructuring thing again. We've just come right back to it. And that, that topic has come up again. Thank you so much. Mr. Daly Farotimi, thank you for this segment because we are still going to keep you. And thank you once again, Dr. Enai Homu, for your time and for your intervention. We sincerely hope that will have a better security uh, architecture in the days to come. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now for our PLUS report. And when we return, we'll be looking at the issue of is the judiciary robbing Nigerians of their rightful leaders? That is up for discussion after this report. <laughs> The convoy of the Bornu State Governor, Babagana Zulum, was attacked on Ibaga Highway. The same road the five aid workers were killed about a week ago were abducted in June 2020. Although the attack was repelled by security operatives in the governor's convoy, there were casualties on the side of his entourage. <laughs> Yeah, 
Zulum thereafter expressed his disappointment at the inability of the military to reach Baga and surrounding areas of insurgents. So where they were, and where they we have were, they must have one hundred and eighty-one soldiers. They must have seventy-five in. officers inside. If we cannot go into Baga, going to Baga, yes, Baga is not yes, yes. It's a problem. Yes, yes. Yeah, going to Baga is not is not a problem. Let's okay. go. Ah, no, why do you, why do you? Ah, why do you? Actually, we didn't know you came all the way back. Why do you? He's there. He said I should come and call you. That. What is that problem? No, let's go, Your Excellency. You I'm know, not going anywhere. No, you need to see it. No, because I'm not, I'm this is the impression you have. You get what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything. What happened with that? The shooting that has happened this day, well, well, is not for one. There is. If that is the case, then we are defeated. No, we are One thousand one hundred and eighty-one soldiers and seventy-five officers. We cannot go into a town that has no more than ten Boko Haram inside. There is no Boko Haram in Saibaga town. We remain, we remain here at Boko Haram. No, I mean, I think the commitment is not there. There is no, there is no Boko Haram inside the town. There is none. We are not just a, a, a pocket that if that infiltrated. Yes, Boko Haram. If a pocket, no Boko Haram, where can we go in? A pocket infiltrated, and we have cleared them. Huh? We have done that now. Huh? Right now, there is no. We saw their their yeah, their, let their, their commander come in. Let's go back. But the fact remains is that I'm happy you. The, 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 no, I'm not happy. I've never happy. You have accepted that. You have accepted that. that. No, I'm, I haven't. There is no Boko Haram inside the house today. No, no problem. I haven't as accepted as it. As long as you just agree to go back, I'm sure it will be settled. Be settled. Yeah. You will see where they were. I'm not going back to the town. No. And I'm not afraid. No, it's not sure. I can sleep if you want. I can sleep inside Baga town. Yes, let's Nothing want, will happen to you. you but the fact that, remains is that there is no Boko Haram inside Baga. If you want to do that now. If there are 10 people Boko Haram, that is there. We can clear the 1,185 officers. You know, we can't go inside Baga town. I told you. What if, you if you give me 30, 30 minutes, I, that Baga town is not a problem. Then take over Baga. Yeah. We, 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 we have you can over. take over Baga so that our people can go back. As long over. as you are in my four. As long as you are in my four. No, not in my four, Your Excellency. You saw where we are. We, we have taken no. over.